So FM24 is here, and I've been feeling like there's something a little bit missing for me. So I figured it's the perfect time for a good old fashioned agent video. Meet Valentin Barker. He's just turned 24 and has been at Arsenal now for five years after his £9.5 million move from Boca Juniors. Despite coming with huge potential and lofty aspirations, he's found playing time at the Gunners extremely hard to come by. In five years at the club, he's made only two appearances in the Premier League and only one was as a starter. It gets worse, however, as in that same period, he only managed three starts and nine substitute appearances in various cup competitions as well. In that same spell, he made 30 appearances for the Argentinian national team, adding further to his frustrations as there's clearly a quality player there who just needs an opportunity to shine and show people what he's got. He's earning £67,000 a week at the moment and does have four years left on his contract, but such is the isolation of the club and the sheer lack of impact that he's been able to make, Arsenal are willing to part with him for an insane £11.5 million. On to player two, meet Arda Guler. The 23-year-old joined Real Madrid five years ago for a whopping £17.25 million from Fenerbahce. And despite that impressive price tag, his situation is possibly even worse. Having made just a single substitute appearance for Real Madrid in La Liga over the past five years. Last season, he was able to finally play some top-level football out on loan at Lille, putting up a fairly average season over 26 appearances, grabbing five assists, but still no goals. He's made a smattering of cup appearances for Real Madrid, but never managed to find the back of the net for them. His only taste of playing and scoring regularly has come in Real Madrid's C team, where he scored 14 goals and grabbed 35 assists in 100 games, which is actually a pretty good record, were it not for the fact they're playing in the Spanish fourth tier, a level which surely he is better than. Much like Barco, he's been racking up appearances on the international scene over this time period, getting 24 caps for Turkey and scoring two goals, but he needs that move to realise the potential that we know that he has. He's currently earning £89,000 a week at Real Madrid and only has one year left on his contract and with no signs of a new contract for him on the horizon, Real Madrid are willing to part with him for £9.5 million, taking quite a hit on the original transfer deal. Both of these players need moves and it's up to us to help them find them. As today, we look to find the perfect moves for both of these players to help them resurrect their careers. We'll then follow their careers into the future to decide who did better, me or their original agents. Before we go any deeper, if you've got this far into the video and you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I suppose now be the perfect time. Uh, back to me, I guess. If you are new to this type of video from me, then let me just explain. When choosing the moves, we will be operating within the parameters of the game world as it exists and only making moves that the game would actually allow us to make properly if we were playing as one of the clubs or something that could happen in the game. So I can't just move Arda Guler to a championship club because he'd get football. I'll be figuring this out by finding suitable clubs for the players, then taking over as the manager of those clubs to get an idea of contract demands and whether the deals could actually be done with the club's finances and various other factors. Once I've picked the moves for the players, I'll be backing out of the save and reloading. I'll then be using the in-game editor to make moves that are exactly the same as the ones I had arranged as manager of the clubs. The simple reason for this is it means that there's not going to be any disruption to the club's managerial hierarchy and it will just be as if the club actually signed the player during the save, rather than me taking over, their manager being sacked, me leaving, and then having to appoint a new manager, it gets a bit squiffy at that point. And this just makes everything seamless. So let's get started with Valentin Barco. Now he's an interesting prospect as he can sort of play anywhere down this entire left-hand side of the pitch, but it, from looking at his attributes, it feels like he would be best deployed either as a full out-and-out wingback in the actual wingback position itself. I suppose he could do left-back as well, but his tackling at the really elite level, particularly with that marking, might let him down a little bit, or potentially be deployed on the left side of a midfield field flat four, essentially, I suppose. He can also play slightly further up the pitch, but does lack that maybe top level pace that you'd hope to have from a player in that type of position. So I'll probably be looking at clubs that are either playing a flat midfield four or potentially a team that has some wingbacks involved so he can really flourish. The issue there, though, is that not a lot of clubs actually play systems like this, certainly not in England. That's right, there's not even that many 4-4-2s there. Crazy. And the fact of the matter, there is not that many teams that currently play systems that he would truly fit into to get the best out of himself. And even fewer of those teams actually have the wage structure, finances and things to actually make the deal possible. But I do like a bit of a challenge. So as always, I found three options for the player and I'm going to choose the one that I think suits him the best, but I want to show you the options as well to get you an idea of the thought patterns I used and what the other options could have been. Potentially, if his actual agent maybe makes a move to one of those clubs, we'll know that we were sort of on the right track maybe. So first up for Valentin, 
Leeds United. They've enjoyed comfortable survival in the Premier League over the last few seasons under the tutelage of Steven Schumacher, and despite their negative bank balance, they do actually have the budget to complete a deal for a player like Barco. This would give him a chance to stay in the Premier League and potentially prove the doubters wrong. Leeds would also be able to afford the wages that he'd be looking for of around about £85,000, and he'd slot nicely into their wage structure, not being one of the top, top earners at the club, but still being a very solid member of their team. The problem comes from Leeds' tactical setup, though, as they operate in a 4-3-3 system, where he'd either be competing with Luis Sinistera, who he is simply not as good as at this point in the save, or worst case, be farming out to left back in place of Verba. And we've already kind of established that those are probably the two weaker positions in his game. So that kind of took Leeds off the table in the end. But next, we look over to Spain and Atletico Madrid. They've been a top four side in Spain for much of the last 15 years, and under brand new manager Thomas Tuchel, they're looking to shake things up a little bit, particularly with them having lost their first three matches in La Liga prior to his appointment. They are paying some absolutely ludicrous wages to some of their players, meaning that the estimated 81,000 thousand pounds a week that he would want would be a drop in the ocean really that said they are also in a bit of a wage budget hole and don't have the biggest amount of money available in terms of transfer funds but with some clauses to be sold there is actually room for them to make the deal should they want to and i thought it would be a good fit for him as he does or of course already speak the language the same issue though does apply that was the problem at leeds and that is again that atletico now under thomas tuchel operate in a 4-2-3-1 this time but the same problems present themselves with it being either a left back spot for him or that attacking midfield role currently occupied by Raul Garcia. Now on paper he is actually better at this stage than both of these players but I still don't feel like this would enable him to get the best out of his performances. But it was then I stumbled on what I believe is probably the perfect move for him at this stage of his career because Germany has several teams playing in the top flight currently that do operate with a back five system that would actually allow him to play as a wing back. However only one of those teams actually had a spot in their squad that he could slot perfectly into and that was Eintracht Frankfurt. After a phenomenal season and getting into the top four two years years ago, they fell into a massive slump midway through last year, which caused Julian Nagelsmann to be appointed mid-season to save them from relegation. They've started sluggishly in the league this season, sitting in 12th, but they're definitely looking to bring things up a notch. They're also stacked with cash, having currently a transfer budget of £55 million and plenty of money around in the wage budget to cover the estimated £90,000 a week that he would want to join them, which would be towards the very top end of their current wage structure, but he would also be one of their best players. The best part, though, is that Frankfurt operate in a 5-2-3 with an extreme extremely defensive sort of base to it and more importantly the two players that he'd be up against for that role potentially on the left hand side would be Franco who's a 22 year old Italian from the youth team at Frankfurt who is simply not ready for top level football and Ansgar Knauf who's also deputized there for them but can't really play very well on his left foot and is very much not suited to that role this means it's the perfect opportunity for Barco to slot straight into the first team and be a genuine impact at Frankfurt and worst case scenario as well should Adam Plojek actually suffer an injury he could even cover for that spot as well so the amount of football he could get is absolutely fantastic it also seems like they they might be on the lookout for a new striker at some point too because um this system ain't gonna work lads and it's for all those reasons and more that i decided that frankfurt would be the perfect move for him so after calling in some transfer clauses to bump their transfer budget up even further for absolutely no reason i just like clicking the button we agreed an 11.5 million pound move and were then able to arrange the following contract with the player with the agent in game actually having extremely low patience unlike your boy eighty thousand pounds a week actually slightly lower than what we expected on a five-year deal with quite a large signing on fee but that was bound to happen he also requested a release clause of 42.5 million pounds which still sort of felt like a win-win for both parties because with them paying 11 million pounds for him even if he did go to a club in the champions league from them a few days down the line they would still quadruple their money on the deal and if he'd done enough to earn that move then he'd clearly be back on the right track for himself as well all in all a very good deal for him and hopefully for the club as well because you know we're his agent but we like to see the clubs do well too is that illegal i feel like that might be illegal so now what i'm gonna do is back out and recreate that exact same move and contract using the in-game editor to again cause no disruptions but we'll get back to that after we've dealt with arda Gula. he too is quite a versatile player being either at his best out in the wide areas where he can put some fantastic crosses in but maybe due to that slight lack of pace at the moment he could be used very well as well in the center of an attacking midfield but nevertheless he could even play deeper if was needed and there's some foreshadowing for that in a minute but we'll circle back to that and with Arda Guler being one of the players in FM that has an attribute range the one that generated into this save sadly has got PA on the very low end of that range which may explain why he struggled for game time at Real Madrid just not having that top level potential that he may have in your saves which is why he can't just walk into a Champions League team and may need to adjust his uh, aspirations a little bit. Now he actually has a preference to either play in the Premier League or to stay in La Liga so I focused my searches there initially however there genuinely were no Premier League clubs that I felt would be a good fit where he would actually be able to come in and play first team football straight from the bat given the way that AI clubs 
pick teams for these players, they often use things like reputation and CA to guide a lot of that. And I feel like he wasn't going to get the football. So we quickly had to turn our attention back to Spain. And the first club we checked out is an interesting one. And that was Las Palmas. The newly promoted side from Gran Canaria have actually hit the ground running in the top flight this season, winning two of their first three games. And Javier Mangerin clearly means business. They also come with a ridiculously large transfer budget of 55 million pounds. And I have no idea why, because they've not had a tycoon takeover. They don't have a tycoon, as far as I'm aware. And they've not sold anyone for huge money. So... Unless they found this down the back of the sofa, I don't know what they're playing at, but it's nice to see. He'd be able to slot into that right wing spot nice and easily ahead of Gutierrez. Things start to get a little bit more sticky when you look at their wage structure. The highest paid players are on around £40,000 a week, and he would want far more than that to join them. And it simply probably wouldn't be a good fit for either him nor the club. Despite the influx of cash that they've had, they're clearly trying to keep things tight. Though the bigger issue was much more straightforward in that he simply wouldn't even consider them because they weren't playing in the Champions League. Bro has got high aspirations, and I rate that, but I think he might have to just simmer that down a little bit because clubs in the Champions League for the most part certainly in the Premier League and La Liga he's not going to get into their teams at the moment but again foreshadowing in fact he seems to have very specific demands that he wants to play in the Champions League and will demand insane wages to anyone who is not in the Champions League or just outright say no it's actually been quite interesting doing his agenting because he has some very specific requirements that do seem to be sort of playing out in the game and probably the most difficult one I've had to deal with so far and I'm really enjoying it so keeping things on the Spanish theme I decided to look a little bit further up the table and landed on Hiro Despite a relegation a few seasons ago, upon their return to the top flight under Rafael Marquez, they've been slowly but surely improving, getting ninth last season and currently sit ninth as well this season. They actually do have the budget available to make the deal done and the space in the wage budget should they require it, and actually have some players on quite large wages, which gave me hope that this might well be the club for him. The biggest issue, though, came from his wage demands, where he was demanding around £115,000 a week to join Hirona, which admittedly would not make him their top paid player but it would be bloody close to it and it would actually be a wage bump of around 20 to 30 thousand pounds a week from what he was earning at madrid where he wasn't playing like, i respect the cojones to ask for that kind of money frankly when he's really at this stage not done a lot to prove that but fascinating to me but i suspected it was again because they were playing outside of the champions league but they were at least further up the league and more established so he was sort of willing to join them if they offered him the world you see how this gets more and more difficult for me so i decided we needed more options this time around so i actually then turned my attention back to germany and to a very familiar name Eintracht Frankfurt. Now, we've already established that they had the funds to make pretty much any deal they wanted, so I wasn't opposed to the idea of actually moving both players to the same club, as that's something we'd never done before. He'd be able to slot into the first team on the right-hand side instead of Agnar Knauf, uh, ironically, a player that was be both of these guys would just be forced out of the team by our new guys, but that's just life, isn't it? However, the issue once again came down to wages, with him demanding, this time, a slightly reduced £115,000 a week to move to Frankfurt, which I still, for me, felt was far too much for the quality of player. He's a great player, but there were better players in the squad, and the amount he was asking for still seemed a little bit insane. And it really did seem that Arda had his heart set on playing Champions League football. And the simple fact of the matter was most of the clubs that were in the Champions League had players in the positions in their squads that were just of a higher quality level than him. And the clubs that he could slot into were not playing in Europe. And thus the wage demands were quite high. An interesting conundrum. But then an opportunity opened up. Now, if you've watched any of the previous agent videos, or certainly the ones like this, I'm not so much talking about the Aaron Walker one, you know I'm generally speaking kind of hesitant to move players back to their previous clubs because it almost feels too easy sometimes to do so, and I like to try to do something a little bit different. But... I thought we'd just give it a try. Just have a little look, test the water at Fenerbahce and see what's up. They've won three out of the last five titles in the Turkish Super League right now and remarkably do actually have the budget to complete the deal should they want to and a little bit of wage money is available for them as well. They have quite an interesting squad as well, stacked with hugely impressive Turkish talent and of course, more importantly, are playing in the Champions League. The issue though then became the tactics of manager Shaban Dersun who plays a system that I don't actually see used that often by AI managers in FM but you can sort of see where the problem is in the they, they, they don't have wide players in it other than the wingbacks. If anything, this would have been more suited for our boy Valentin Barco. And if he was to move here, he'd end up in competition with Gerson and Simon Szymanski in the midfield battle. And they are two of the better players that Fenerbahce have. It would be a very difficult battle. He'd certainly be in it as he's right there, but it would be a tough one for him. Point being, I was kind of put off by this because I did want to prioritise getting him first team football to have a chance to rejuvenate his career and get that playing time that he so desperately needs. But anytime I tried to look at clubs where he could get some football, maybe a conference league team, a Europe Europa League team in some of the bigger leagues. At one point, he demanded like £150,000 a week to join Espanyol, who were in a conference league side in Spain. Um, it's... Man has his heart set somewhere. So I thought I'd pursue things a little further at Fenerbahce anyway, just to see what the sort of wage situation would be there. And... 
Lo and behold, after a little bit of negotiation on top of things, he was willing to settle for somewhere between 50 and 60 thousand pounds a week at Fenerbahce, which is like half of what he was after at the other one. So clearly, man just wanted to go home. Honestly, I kind of like the fact that the game actually has mechanics that would allow things like that to happen. And I just actually quite like that. It's been a challenge to find the club and get the move sorted, but it was kind of an interesting one. So at that point, I felt that must be the best move for him at this point, despite the extra competition he'd have for places in the squad. And that might definitely be an issue. My hope was that they would simply have so much quality that they'd ha maybe have to change their tactics or the manager would leave. And hopefully he'd get an opportunity to play in there anyway. As some of the players he was up against were at least slightly on the older side, but it was definitely a risk. And this one may not pay off for us because I can totally see him spending one more year at Real Madrid with his old agent, leaving on a free at the end of the season and then massively dropping his wage demands because he's out of contract but that's that them's the breaks i really do suspect it was a combination of them firstly playing in the champions league and being his former club who i believe he has supporter listed in his profile i can't remember it exactly so i figured you know what today's the day we're going to bring him home so after agreeing to a 9.25 million pound deal in the end i was amazed to find that upon entering the contract negotiations Bro wanted even less money. Um, £52,000 a week was the deal we eventually agreed on a five-year deal with no release clause. That's really good for Fenerbahce and for him as well to get some football, hopefully. Um, But yeah, what a wage cut to actually take to join them when he wouldn't take it to go anywhere else. And maybe he just, just wanted to go home. And you can see that that slots him really nicely into Fenerbahce's wage structure and is certainly not even in the top seven or eight best paid players at the club. We'll have a chance to improve those wages potentially with a new contract, but... Hey, he just wants to start again. He is also up against players like Cengiz Unde, who, again, is not in the team because of the tactic that they're playing at the moment, which is utterly wild. What are they doing? So I suspect there might be some shakeups at Fenerbahce over the next couple of years anyway with the managerial situation, because I can't imagine a lot of these players that are playing in positions that aren't supposed to be, are going to be too happy about it for very long. And I'd still rather him be here back home playing football at least more so than he would be at Real Madrid, because it just can't be good for a young man. So what I've now done is I've recreated those contracts using the editor. You can see here, Van Barco on that five-year contract over at Eintracht Frankfurt on 80,000 pounds a week. There's a couple of things that you can't recreate in the in-game editor. I believe there is one thing which was like a top division winning bonus or something that you can't do. So I do apologize for that. However, I believe that it also boosts the loyalty bonus when you move them like this. So it kind of balances out. And here is Arda Guler back at Fenerbahce, hoping for an excellent season at his new club on 52,000 pounds a week. I feel like the values take a little while to adjust when you move them like this as well. But hopefully he can have a great season here and a fantastic rest of his career. So what we're going to do now is we're going to sim five years, 10 years, and to the end of each player's careers to see how they got on under the moves that we've made them and then we're going to do the same sim without those moves and see how i got on against the original agent and obviously you can decide at the end who did the best now i feel like valentin barco we surely have got to have done the best out of that one because the only other interest for him at arsenal from what i could see was in loan deals to manchester united and he would not play for them so if that happens then con congratulations but i'll be very curious to see what happens with arda Guler if he stays at real madrid for another season and maybe leaves on a free transfer that's where they could maybe get us but i cannot wait to find out so let's start with valentin barco we're going to go five years into the future and see where he is at. I don't think he's still going to be at Eintracht Frankfurt. So, Valentin... Just type in Barco. It's just quicker, isn't it? And Valentin... <laughs> Bro's ended up there anyway. <laughs> Have we just gone the long route to Manchester United? Let's see. Maybe it's a loan. It's not going to be a loan, is it? No. Um, <laughs> okay. So, it looks like it was a case of they bought out the contract. But he does look a lot better. And he's actually playing for Manchester United now. Albeit still only 28. 67 caps for Argentina now. So, he's definitely flourished on that side of things. Um, 42.5 million, which must have been the release clause. Let's see how he actually got on. Apologies for all the career stat stuff. It's just when you start a fresh save, this skin just loads this stuff. And I have to change them all one by one. You, that's all we need to know, really, is the career stats anyway. So, after the move to Eintracht Frankfurt, 16 appearances over the course of the first season, which is actually slightly surprising considering they didn't have anyone for that position. Um, we'll have to have a little look at that if we can do. Maybe look at their transfers. The second season was much, much better from him, though. In fact, fantastic. 27 appearances in the Bundesliga, eight assists and three Man of the Match awards. He seemed to finally find his feet at that point, and that was enough for Manchester United to go, yep, yoink, he's ours. 42.5 million pound move for him to Manchester United, except Bro has literally gone back to exactly what he was doing at Arsenal, just with slightly more appearances. One start in the first season at United, albeit some in other competitions, then in the second season, a little bit more. He does seem to have finally found a little bit more performance in the next year, but still 26 appearances, only nine from the start. Does he just love the bench? Like, what's up, Valentin? Come on, buddy. I'm a bit disappointed that he's gone back so quickly after only two years. 
and now he's sort of become a bench dweller again a little bit. And that sucks. I'm hoping that maybe he either forces his way into the Manchester United team a little bit more, or maybe they sell him on to someone else for the sort of perfect moments of his career to really play again. I almost felt like we need to do another episode just from this point now. On the plus side, he's earning 140 grand a week at Manchester United now. So he's at very least massively improved his wage situation, which I suppose is something. We'll go through milestones for the players, what they've won and all that jazz once we get to the end of their careers. But for now, we're going to move five more years into the future and see if, if he's still at Manchester United and not playing. I swear to God, Valentin. Right then, here we go. Please don't disappoint me. And he's at Ajax. Okay, that's a bit more interesting. What are we saying? Oh, he went to Fulham and didn't play... How did he not play for Fulham is my question. Um, what does disappoint me slightly is that he's only made a further eight appearances for Argentina over that period, which is a little bit concerning. Uh, he's actually out of contract at Ajax this summer. But firstly, we need to know what happened with the Fulham situation here. After a few more years at Manchester United, uh, and he actually got worse for him again, uh, stopped playing almost entirely, then went out on loan to Fulham and didn't play for Fulham for crying out loud. And I'm a Fulham fan. Like, this is, what are we doing? And then they decided to buy him for 15 million pounds and then he didn't start a game for them in the Premier League. On the plus side, from Fulham's perspective, somehow they managed to convince Ajax to pay them 14 million pounds for him. Literally what must have been the same season. It was the same season. It was January. They sold him to Ajax for £14 million. And to be fair, he's finally started to rekindle some playing time at Ajax. 26 appearances over that, but it looks like it was only a three-year contract. Now, I don't know if he's retiring or whether he's just moving other clubs. He's wanted by other teams, uh, looking like maybe a move to Saudi Arabia to finish things off there. I'm a bit worried, honestly, that we might not have got this one right. Um, he's just... Not 185 appearances in his career in the league at the age of 33 is wild to me. But let's now see where he actually ends up at the end of his career. Surely he at least actually got a club that summer, right? He didn't just retire that summer. Okay, Spartak Moscow. That is, yeah, now he's retiring at 34, albeit he's going to be 35 soon, but that's still fairly young. No more Argentina caps. Presumably he retired from international football in that period. But yeah, left Ajax on a free transfer, went to Spartak for one season. It's not the most impressive of careers. I, I think we have to be honest there. Some very strange transfers in there. I, I kind of feel like we did the right thing at the time, but I'm very curious now to see how his career goes with the other agent later in the video. But let's just check his milestones because that is going to matter. Has he won some stuff? He must have won something at Manchester United, even if he wasn't playing that often, right? So let's do all no, we're competitions, right? So, he, I mean, there you go. Carabao Cup with Manchester United. Another Carabao Cup with Manchester United. A third Carabao Cup with Manchester United. They love those energy drinks. And also, the FA Cup that season. And won the Champions League with Manchester United too. So, you know, he did win some silverware at Manchester United. But whether he featured in many of those games is a very different matter. But all in all, not as impressive as I would have hoped. But what we're going to do now is we're going to head over to Arda Goulet and see how he's done in the remaining years of his career before we check in with the other agent. Right then, here we go. How badly have I mucked this up? Please don't tell me I've screwed this up so bad. Arda Goulet is still at Fenerbahce. That could mean good and bad things. Hopefully he's played loads. If 59 isn't, isn't as much as I was hoping. But he is wanted. And he has signed a new contract. He does look very good, actually. So he's up to his wage, clearly. He's on... £73,000 a week there and has signed a three-year contract extension at Fenerbahce. I think what's really going to be telling here, because he is sort of in his prime at this point, I don't know whether he'll ever actually reach the 153 PA that he has in this save. He was at 139 uh, when we actually made the move, in case you're wondering. Uh, Barco was 143 with a PA of 176, in case that matters. Um, I wonder who he's wanted by. That's the question. It, it, it's El Hitian. I was hoping it might be like that big, big move. I mean, he'll earn a lot of money if that transfer comes off. It's just a question of whether that's the best thing for his career. The worst thing, I think, for me is the fact that he's only made another eight appearances for the Turkish national team in the past five years and that is concerning and I suspect it may have come down to simply not enough football and that was my big concern so there we go yeah he makes that move to Fenerbahce first season and oh my god he plays seven games off the bench what have I done what have I done I think I might have effed it here friends then he does come back and makes 12 substitute please tell me this was at least some starts Okay, seven starts in the third season at the club before being loaned out back to France again to Marseille, where he did at least score. This was the first goal that he'd scored in the top flight of any nation since he was at Fenerbahce the first time around, which was nearly a decade ago. But I was hoping for a little bit more. He did at least, when he came back this season, still wasn't starting matches for them, which does genuinely surprise me. And maybe they've had some success and have just brought in better players, but he was still right among the top players at the club. So um, I think it might have just been a case of he didn't want to play in that central midfield role and they clearly have they changed their manager they have but now he's being kept out of the task so he is actually playing in the center of midfield he's being kept out of the team by this chap here denny's erden who in fairness is absolutely unbelievable right five more years he'll be 33 at this point 
I just hope he's playing some more football. And now for a dose of copium. Um, I'm thinking maybe I'm just not as familiar with the mechanics a little bit that might have changed in the transfers for FM24, perhaps? I, it's, it's, it's lies. It's an excuse. I have done goofed. But that doesn't mean I'm going to lose. For all we know, the original agent may have goofed even harder. Speaking of harder, it's Arda Gula. Where are we at in 2038? Valencia. Ah! So he got his move back to Spain. The question is whether it was a paid transfer or a free. Not that it really matters. He's at Valencia. A few more caps for Turkey, albeit only six more. Um, hang on a minute. Hang on just a second. He's played a, nearly 200 league games for Fenerbahce now. So almost the moment that he came back, that following season, bang, straight into the team, 34 league appearances from the start, nine goals, 10 assists. This is what he can do when you play him. I can only imagine that my fictional agent version of myself would have been livid that they weren't playing him through this entire period. And then look what he can do when they put him in the team. 11 goals and 12 assists. It's like he just burst into the scene. At the very least, he's had an unbelievably successful spell at Fenerbahce eventually scoring i mean look at that double digit assists every single season for them there and that's what earned him albeit a free transfer admittedly to valencia where he's hit the ground running eight goals and seven assists in la liga he's absolutely flying now if i just tick one of these two where they've played we can see what games played in the position yes yeah, so he's playing off the right for valencia over the course of this year 53 appearances for them 12 goals and nine assists over all competitions that is really really nice i'm not the sort of pathway I was expecting for him, but I think it's cool. And the fact is, he still has another year left on his deal. He's on 90 grand a week, which is ironically exactly the same as he was on at Real Madrid. But now he's killing it in La Liga. Getting goals from them in the Champions League as well. Three goals and two assists in there. So he's playing that Champions League football with Valencia. And it's just taken a little while to come around to that. But, I mean, he's a phenomenal footballer. It's just a shame it took so long for someone to put him in the team and go, there you go, please flourish for me. Because it's not like he would have got any better in those years in between. It's just they started playing him and he's absolutely killed it. So let's see how much left of his career he's actually got. I'm suspecting he might sign like a one-year extension at Valencia, potentially to take him through a little bit further, see if he can win anything there, and then we'll check in on the milestones. So it's 2040. Is he still going to be playing? He actually is. He is now retiring, though, at 35 years old after another year. He's on 220 grand a week at Valencia. Bravo. Bravo, Ardo. That's wonderful. Regardless, let's see if that form continued at Valencia. Ah, it kind of... Well, it sort of did, actually, weirdly. Less goals the following year. Potentially maybe not able to get forward as much. But he just became an absolute playmaker, it seems. 13 assists that year for them as well. And even over the course of this year, with less appearances and also more substitute roles, still managed to get a goal and two assists and a man of the match performance. I'm really happy. He's really been like a late bloomer. It feels like the last sort of five or six years, from about 29 onwards, he's been an absolute goat it's just taking him a while to get there so let's just have a look at his milestones see what he has actually won hopefully it's some things probably some turkish titles to competitions oh damn there's loads so upon moving to fenerbahce wins the league that's the super cup isn't it um wins the league oh conference league runner up nearly won a european trophy there wins the league runner up in a few other trophies in there as well wins the league doesn't appear like he actually managed to win any european trophies there but did come close it would seem uh won the copa del rey with Valencia. So that's actually really impressive to win the Spanish Cup with Valencia too. So no European honours, but the clubs he was... If he had managed to get one with Fenerbahce or Valencia, that would have been incredible. So the fact that he's won loads of leagues in Turkey, some cups in there as well, and also the Copa del Rey, that's really impressive. I wonder why... I assume he maybe just retired a bit early for international football as well. I'm not sure Bro has actually ever retired from international football, um, but I'm also more surprised than that he wasn't able to force his way back into the team considering how good he was playing. But I suppose if that other dude was presumably no longer at Fenerbahce, that might have been why, and he was kept out of the Turkish national team by him. In fact, let's check him out. Bro is still there remarkably. And he's also sort of suffered a little bit in terms of the national team stuff. I wonder if injuries have impacted him a little bit there. That's surprising to me that he's actually still there. I figured he would have gone for moon money, but fair play for them for hanging on to him. I don't think I've done super well. I'm actually really disappointed with the way that things went for Valentin Barco. I think things went better for Arda Guler, but I would have liked to have seen him get a little bit more game time, but that is on me. I moved into a club knowing that perhaps he wasn't going to get as so much game time as we thought he might. And he suffered from that, unfortunately. I'm curious to see, though, if the AI agent does any better. I suspect that we're about to be very embarrassed by him. So let's start with Valentin Barco. Right, was he still playing here? We're looking for the last year of his career, basically, because I don't think I had keep history on after retirement. So he seems like he's already retired. He seems to retire early in both. The year I'm loading, he's 33. That would be a very early retirement for someone, surely. He must still be playing here. Valentin Barco, Pachuca. Okay. If you'd given me a million guesses, I would not have said Pachuca. But that that's Mexico, right? Oh, he went to... He went to bloody Wolfsburg. Oh. 40 Argentine caps. So less. And he's retiring at the age of 33. Which is very young. Particularly with 17 natural fitness. So let, let's map this out then. 
he moved to uh, for 10.7. How did they get him even cheaper? I guess later in the window, they dropped the asking prices even further. But when I was looking, he always moved on loan to someone before. That's why I had to do it from the date that we did it originally. But apparently that didn't happen in this universe here. As yeah, he moved to Wolfsburg for 10.75 million and just immediately played. And I know from looking at Wolfsburg that they did not play wingbacks. They were playing a 4-3-3. Um, so he was either playing as a left back for Wolfsburg or as like an attacking midfielder. And maybe we should have taken that into account. I just figured he'd be better as a wing back. And his ratings at Wolfsburg were very, very solid indeed. And he's just basically played out most of the rest of his career at Wolfsburg. Now, what I will say is it seems like he's possibly not won too much there as he seems to have dropped out of Argentinian international calling for sure. So I do wonder, it depends on what you value most, I suppose. And then he moves to Pachuca over in Liga MX for free, does play a decent amount of games there and then just decides to hang it up. How did he get 6.43 average rating? I can sort of see why he maybe decided to make that move. But then just to retire at 33 is surprising. He's nearly 34, but still, even for FM, that's quite young. Uh, let's have a look at his milestones. So maybe there's some cool stuff in here. Hey, now in fairness, Bro did win the Conference League. That, that was it. But that one Conference League with Wolfsburg, I mean, it's still... Not, it's technically not more than he won in the other one because he was with Manchester United, but I suppose he was at least playing for Wolfsburg when that happened. But I suspect that his career earnings would have also been somewhat lower than he would have done with us. This one's a little bit tighter because on the one hand, he did play a lot of games for Wolfsburg and that's obviously very important, but it seems like he didn't reach the career heights in some ways that he did with our version. But it's... Ooh, a tough one to judge. I'll leave that one up to you. The one I'm very interested in, though, is Arda Guler. This, this is the one that could make or break this for me. So I'm going to try and firstly find out when he's... Surely he's not going to have retired this young. So we're going to switch to the future a little bit and try and track back until we find him. So this is the furthest my sim went, because by then he would be like 38 or something. So he's not going to be... He's going to be retired by now, presumably. So Arda Guler is... Oh, that's amazing. Hang on. He's a manager. This has never happened in one of these videos before. He's become a manager. Which means we can actually look at his whole career from here. He stayed at Fenerbahce. Wait. Hang on, he came back to Fenerbahce. That's wild. That is absolutely mad. They did the same thing. But firstly, I mean, he's not the best manager currently, but he has only just taken over the role. At th he's only 36, actually, over here at Bursa Sport. I love the fact that he's become a manager. That's amazing. Albeit... But then again, he's only got a National B license at the moment. So presumably as he gains his coaching badges, he will improve as a manager, um, but just not on the defending or fitness, most likely. Okay, we, we've got to step in and see what's actually happened here. So overall, we want career stats, right? So 34 million pounds. I mean, I feel like I've been, I've been bested here, but we had the right idea. So yes, he did do that one more season at Real Madrid, played zero minutes for them again, and then moved to Leipzig on a free. And in all honesty, barely made an impact at Leipzig either. Like, he would have been, this is what, 28, 29, when he finally moves to Fenerbahce. They did get a bit mugged off on the price, though. 34 million when we got them, him to Fenerbahce for, what was it, 9.25 million pounds? So they certainly paid a lot of money for him, but his performances there were definitely better than ours, I would say. Although, he certainly hit the ground running a bit sooner uh, this time around. Maybe the squad sort of had opened up a spot for him at that point, whereas with ours, we maybe moved him a little bit too early. But I feel like the highs he's had at Fenerbahce were not as high as the highs he's had with us, potentially. Uh, he's had some... Although that season there was insane. Six goals and 19 assists. 23 in all competitions is actually kind of mad. But he also didn't get that opportunity to come back to... A like a Champions League side on one of the big nations, potentially. So I don't know. That's a tough one. Although what I will say is his last like season there, he still had an absolutely dominant year with 10 assists and eight goals. That's a really good season. I love that he went back to Fenerbahce in both versions. We both had the same idea in the end. But that little detour through Leipzig, I don't know how much that would have helped his development, truthfully. Because it almost feels like he hit the ground running in his career at almost the exact same moment for both of us. Because he spent a few years dawdling around at Fenerbahce not playing as much for us. Whereas he spent those same years dawdling around not playing for Leipzig instead. But I suspect he would have been earning quite good money, potentially at a club like Leipzig, whereas maybe that's the one factor in there. But let's see what he's won. 46 caps for Turkey in the end. So he did actually, and 10 goals, did actually outdo our version as well. Maybe the extra football he had in key moments possibly would have helped him there too. I love that he idolizes Stefan Sessegnon. What an interesting choice. So he actually won the DFB Pokal with both Leipzig and Mainz, which is surprising. Um, back to back -back years as well with two different teams. Man's just a good omen. And then won the league with Fenerbahce, won the league with Fenerbahce, won the league with Fenerbahce. No European finals with Fenerbahce. I'm not as embarrassed as I thought I was going to be. It's also just really cool to see him become a manager. That's kind of dope. Uh, normally, I leave these overnight and we would have been 
been further into the future, but I had to do them both in one day, and so I didn't have time to do that. And I kind of wish I had now, so we could have seen what he would have done as a manager, potentially, at, well, currently Bursa Sport, where admittedly, he's not actually managed a single game yet, so we don't know how good of a manager he's going to be because he's never managed a football match before. So there we have it. Our first agent video of the year in the books. I wanted to go back to basics for this one as it's a new game cycle. There's brand new players that can be absolutely misused by their clubs. And frankly, today, I don't think we've really helped with that a great deal. But, you know, I'll learn maybe. So I realize this has probably been quite a long one, but I wanted to put a bit more in these ones. You know, it's fun, right? I just have fun making these videos. So if you have enjoyed it and you haven't already, drop a like on the video. That'd be dope. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. That'd be sick too. And I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Hold your gun. Capybara. Bye-bye. He's found playing time at the Gummers. The Gummers? <laughs> just the Club of Teeth.